Hello, this is Dr. Bhavin Jankarya and welcome to CT Chest Review at www.ctchestreview.com. Today's topic is on radiation risk with CT scan of the chest. And many people have this uh, fear that uh, doing a CT scan might increase risk of radiation in the future. So let's just address that and we'll divide this into two parts. One is the risk, if at all, with a single CT scan and the other is when we have multiple CT scans done. So this is a typical scenario where a 26-year-old with COVID-19 and increasing breathlessness has been advised a CT scan of the chest so that we can get more information and manage the treatment better. This is a definitely indicated study and not one of those that are done just because of WhatsApp groups and people wanting to do their own CT scans. Now, before the study, uh, they need to know their future risk of cancer because they've recently heard that one CT scan of the chest has the radiation of 100 to 300 chest x-rays. So if you just had to think about this, uh, ask yourself, is there any risk or no risk, 2%, 5%, or whatever the risk, it's much smaller than the risk of not doing the study. And a lot of people would choose option D saying that if we need to do the CT scan, of course we should do it and <clears throat> future radiation risk is not as important as knowing what is happening currently. But that's not the right answer. And uh, let's see what happens with radiation. So we have the deterministic effects which occur with high doses as with radiotherapy and nuclear accidents, etc., where we have diarrhea, skin burns, hair loss. We're not concerned with that. We're concerned with the stochastic effects where there is DNA damage and repair and that may lead to random DNA mutations and the theory is that this can then lead to possible cancer in the future. Before we go ahead with radiation numbers and CT scans of the chest, let's look at normal. So the normal background is 3 millisieverts per year. This is what all of us are exposed to in India. And so by age 17, we've already received 50 millisieverts and generally up to 250 millisieverts by age 80. And this can vary from country to country. So here is a chart that tells us the kind of radiation we receive from different studies. A plain CT scan of the chest, like the one we do for COVID-19, would be 1 to 3 millisieverts. A chest x-ray can be 0 0.0, 0 0.05 to 0.1, depending on the modality. But 0.1 would be the upper limit, and that's what we get from a mammogram, etc. And this chart is available at acr.org. So let's straight away start with this statement that says that there's no evidence that low-level radiation from medical imaging causes harm. Um, and below 50 to 100 millisieverts of exposure, the risks are pretty much non-existent. And the reason for this is it's now 126 years since the discovery of X-rays, 125 years since the invention of the first X-ray machine, and 49 years since the first CT scan images came in. And we still have no single study that has shown that the use of CT scan um, causes um, cancer. And this is a statement endorsed by virtually every major physics or physicist society in the world. So, so why all the brouhaha? So there is a BEIR7 report that basically talks about the radiation-related uh, issues of Japanese bomb survivors. And now we have Chernobyl and Fukushima added to that. And so in 2001, Dr. David Brenner and his colleagues did a modeling study. So the big study that started off this entire issue of radiation and CT scans was a modeling study. And we know from COVID-19 that modeling studies are just those. Unless they are proven with on-the-ground trials, you cannot really accept uh, studies that just say that, oh, if X is so, Y is so, and we believe this to be a prediction. So what they did is used this linear no-threshold theory that says that, let's say that the people in Hiroshima, Nagas Nagasaki received 1,000 millisieverts of radiation at one shot, and so their risk of cancer is X. Then according to the LNT theory and the modeling done by uh, Dr. Brenner and his colleagues, if you receive 10 millisieverts of radiation, let's say from a CT scan of the abdomen done with everything, oral IV contrast, then they said the X is, the risk is X upon 100. 
Now, if you receive one millisievert of radiation as from a CT chest for COVID-19, then the risk is X upon 1,000. And then if it's 0.1 millisievert, which is from a chest X-ray, then the risk is X upon 10,000. So there is no safe threshold for radiation risk, according to this theory. And so then they did more modeling, saying that because apparently children are more radiosensitive, and we'll come to that in a minute the risk further increases. And so, again, remember, all modeling studies, right? It's like the aspirin analogy. Obviously, if we, if one single person at one time takes 1,000 aspirin, it's likely that person will die. But if you apply the same LNT theory to aspirin, it would mean that one aspirin a day for 1,000 days will also kill in the same way, and 1,000 people taking one aspirin on a single day will also lead to a death. And we know that's not true. So the same thing is with radiation. In reality, there is a threshold below which there is no known radiation risk. And that threshold is between 50 to 100 millisieverts. And if we just want to be on the safe side, let's take 50 millisieverts of a one-time radiation exposure as the safe um, uh, limit. Uh, below which there is no risk of radiation. The tragedy of the LNT theory and Dr. Brenner's paper is the radiophobia it has caused because this has then led to wild extrapolations. There was a paper in the NEJM which then amplified everything. The risk estimates became 1.5 to 2 percent. And we had these kind of papers saying that, you know, there'll be 29,000 excess cancers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so it's kind of gotten into people and doctors now that this is harmful. And there are many more papers that now come out which address all of these things, but they, they mean nothing. <laughs> In fact, not doing a CT scan when indicated because of radiophobia causes unnecessary tragedies, which I have personally witnessed on occasion. So once we have these modeling or hypothetical or studies that talk about a hypothesis, then of course you need the longitudinal studies. And these started after this article. And so the first one was the 2012 paper in Lancet, uh, by Dr. Pierce and their group, which um, looked at CT scans done in the UK. And they said that there would be one excess case of brain tumor and one excess case of leukemia per 10,000 patients who underwent CT scan. But what they did not do is look at reverse causation. So when people get CT scans of the head done, there could be an underlying problem which makes them do a CT scan which predisposes them to cancer. So it could be that the indication of doing the CT scan is itself the cause of the cancer and not the CT scan itself. So unless you've accounted for reverse causation and looked at those estimates, you can't make these statements. And if you're looking for that one case in 10,000, you can always manage the statistics to make that happen. So there was another Dutch study which said the same thing, and you can read all of that here. And they also had the same problem with reverse causation, etc. And there have been at least another seven or eight studies after that, um, including from Germany, South Korea, etc. So then earlier this year, we had the Korean appendicitis study that accounted for reverse causation because it was a very nice study. You look at patients who have had surgery for appendicitis or been treated for appendicitis. And they looked at those who had received CT scans and not received CT scans. And they found 66 additional hematolymphoid cancers in those who had. So that became a 0.02%. Uh, but they, there are so many other confounders. Individual dosimetry is not available. So it, it's very likely that this is a statistical aberration and a flawed study. But what all of these articles start with is that it is well known that red marrow is highly sensitive to radiation effects. And then the extrapolation is that if red marrow is highly sensitive, then there'll be more DNA mutations. Those DNA mutations can apparently lead to cancer. But when you trace all these references, they all go to the UNSCEAR, which is a WHO United Nations group, 2008 publication that says none of that. It just shows us what a kind of radiation red marrow can have. So in fact, even if we start questioning the basic concept that children are more radiosensitive because they have more dividing cells and growing organs and more red marrow, 
we have no basic science evidence uh, to show that. So then let's come to multiple CT scans. The same 26 year old got the first CT scan done and now they need a second CT scan after 10 days because of some complications and they want to know if this will lead to cumulative increased risk. So remember that the radiation risk is stochastic. That means it's a one, each event is its own issue, right? Remember DNA repair and uh, damage and repair all occur within six to 24 hours. And so all of this gets sorted out typically within one day. And so there is no such concept as cumulative damage or it's not as if radiation causes damage in the cells then that lingers and then you have one more shot of radiation, let's say six months later, and that uh, adds to the damage. It doesn't happen like that. You have damage, it gets repaired, it's over. Right? The only issue, of course, is if you received 100 millisieverts in a single day. And that is a problem that has been addressed by... Uh, um, a, a group that looked at this uh, and two papers that came out and they showed that this is a challenge that in some large institutes where a lot of interventional procedures are done you can have a, a, a small number of patients who do get more than 100 millisieverts at one time in one day and I think that should be addressed and steps should be taken to understand this and try and reduce the exposure to below 50 if possible and definitely below 100. So, simple fact, there is no known risk from radiation as far as cancer is concerned uh, if the radiation is less than 50 to 100 millisieverts at one time. And a PET CT, which is the highest radiation, is, is about uh, 20 to 25 millisieverts, a chest CT. Done for COVID-19 is about 1 to 2 millisieverts. If it's done for other reasons, could go up to 5 millisieverts. And a chest radiograph would be between 0.05 to 0.1 millisieverts. So there is no known risk of from radiation related to any of these studies. And therefore, comparing radiation from a chest CT scan with radiation from chest X-ray is completely irrelevant. And there is no such thing as cumulative radiation risk. As a physics concept, it doesn't make sense or doesn't exist unless you have cumulative radiation within a single day or within, uh, you know, two days, etc. So I hope that this has helped um, uh, clarify some answers and questions. A lot of this is in this book. Um, as well. And uh, don't hesitate to comment or ask questions if you have at info at ctchestreview.com. Feel free to share the post or email or video widely. Um, and to receive updates each time a new post is up, please subscribe with your email ID. And uh, thank you for listening and have a good week ahead.